Lesson 5, Nurturing the New Idea. Welcome back. This segment is about nurturing the new idea in analysis, that flash of insight which makes the analyst and the customer go, aha! Why is this important? Well, as a leader of analysts, you need to be aware of a particular phenomenon. New ideas usually come into the world half-baked, and veteran analysts are masters of lacerating the half-baked idea. This dynamic stifles creativity, insight, and innovation, and it's your job as a leader to make sure that doesn't happen. It's understandable why an analytic environment can often choke new ideas. Analysts are dedicated to critical thinking. They tend to regard every new idea critically, probing for its weaknesses or logical flaws. Analysts are also trained skeptics, and they need to be. They sift volumes of bad information, shaky sources, and weak allegations. Simply to deal with the volume of information flowing at them, they learn to judge in an instant. And when you are talking about those new half-baked ideas, let's be honest, most of them are bad. But enough are good, or can mature into something good, that they need to be protected from dismissal. They need a chance to be more fully baked. This is your responsibility. Get this right, and you'll see gains in three overlapping areas. Insight, creativity, and innovation. Insight. Discerning a meaningful underlying truth. Insight is the reason your busy customers read your analysis in the first place. They want to learn something new that matters to them. Creativity. Dictionary.com defines this as, quote, the ability to transcend traditional rules, patterns, relationships, and the like, and to create meaningful new ideas, unquote. It's more than putting new insights into the analysis. It can also be a fresh and appealing way of presenting the analysis, or to gather information, or to tap outside expertise. Innovation. Putting a new idea to work with the new approach. If your team is good at these, your products stand out in your customers' minds as worth their precious time, packed with value and easy to read. Without these things, your team's products can become stale, turgid, and at best, tossed on that pile of stuff to be read later. What can you do? First, increase the chances new ideas will be hatched. Like life itself, new ideas are usually the product of two other ideas coming together. A molecule can only combine with the molecule next to it. A new idea draws components from the intersection of two or more other ideas. You can increase the chances of this fortuitous collision. Bring outside experts into contact with your team. Send your analysts to new places for information. And, as we said in the last segment, build analytic teams that are diverse. Analysts of different cultures, disciplines, and ways of thinking. Ideas will collide every day. You may have to referee their interactions at first, but over time you can build a culture that thrives on such interaction. Your own interaction with the analysts can also be a catalyst for new ideas. Simply asking questions like why and what if can nudge analysts out of mental ruts and spark a new thought. Second, protect that new idea when it's hatched. When your team is meeting and reflexively dismisses a half-baked idea, hit pause. Say, wait a minute, I'd like to hear more. Invite your analysts to shore it up before they tear it down. If the idea has a weak point, identify it and see if you can improve it or work around it. If a skeptic says, it just can't be true, invite him to explain why not. Eventually, your team will start doing this on their own. You may still end up with many ideas on the cutting room floor, but the best ones will be saved. Third, pay close attention to your own demeanor. As the leader of analysts, your responsibility for quality control in your products, it's important. But don't let your quality control just be about fixing what's wrong with the product, errors in wording, sourcing, or reasoning. Quality control should also be about making sure each piece contains an insight, and that that insight is not buried. The insight is the most important thing. Also, pay attention to what subtle cues you are sending about creativity and innovation. Every boss says they welcome creativity, but many recoil when they see it. Many simply don't welcome the surprise of it. And remember, innovation usually requires some trial and error. 
What cues are you sending that you don't like the error part of trial and error? Finally, pay attention to your competition. There's no greater incentive for innovation than seeing theirs. Get all of this right and your team will produce a flow of products that are fresh and packed with value. Your competition will be watching your team and your customers will open your products first. Okay, that's enough for now on nurturing the new idea. Generally, before your analysts get the new idea, they've started working on a question. Our next lesson will be about asking the right question. There is much you can do to advance your team's analysis through your questions. There are questions that can keep you and your analysts honest, and there are some questions that can be toxic. See you next unit.